Okay, so my topic um, is about the use of OpenStreetMap or OSM for the creation and validation of land use and land cover maps. So I will make a small introduction uh, on the topic and then uh, the ways uh, we can use OSM for creating or helping to create land use and land cover maps, mainly converting for validation and for training and some conclusions, opportunities, limitations and so on. So the time is short, so for the introduction, um, I'm not sure how familiar, if there are someone who is not familiar what, with what is a land use land cover map, so basically there are maps where you have classes of land use or land cover, like urban fabric, forest or agriculture, or water, and uh, these maps are important for environmental studies, for example, land cover change. Usually they are created using satellite imagery, you use classifiers, some types of classifiers require training data, so you need to know where are regions, which correspond to each of the classes, and then you run the classifiers, you have a map, and that map needs to be validated afterwards. Um, um, so here in the main, uh, the main aim uh, of these projects we have uh, going on is to add value to uh, VGI, so Volunteer Geographic Information in general, not only OSM, by processing existing data, integrating diverse uh, several sources of data. All this started with the two pro cost actions, which ended in 2016. Uh, so there are several people involved in this. Um, and uh, so when we uh, started working, the aim was not OSM, but it was uh, volunteer geographic information, so information uh, created by volunteers that has location, like panoramic photos, Flickr, Twitter, YouTube, and so on. So many types of data. Uh, projects are created with very different objectives, and so they may have uh, a usefulness, let's say, for diverse objectives. In our uh, many amounts of data, and some of them can be downloaded. So, one of them, of course, is OSM, and the potential uh, is very large, and so we uh, started to analyze how could we use OSM for land use land cover map creation and or validation. So, this is what I was saying before, so the cre creation or production of land cover maps, classifications of images, you need training data, and then for this uh, assessment, the accuracy of the final product, you need reference data. So data that you know is correct, that you compare with the created map. Uh, map. Uh, so, um, OSM may assist both in the creation and the validation by three main ways. A direct creation of a land use land cover map from the data that is available in OSM, by creating reference data sets that can be used to validate maps, and by generating data sets that can be used to train the classifiers. What are, what, why, why? use OSM and not just do it the way it is usually done. The thing is speed, because if you create the reference data sets by hand, uh, you may have, you need to have field visits, you need to make photo interpretation, it takes time, it costs money, it needs experts, uh, and, uh, and uh, one important aspect is that with the amount of satellite imagery that is being available more often and more often, you need to automate processes. So if you, if you need to do some things manually, uh, it takes time and when you have a map created and validated, you have already have several images that were available. So you need to automate processes. So the aim is to get OSM data and create something like this, a land use land cover maps with some classes. Uh, so we were developing uh, a web application, we are developing, which converts automatically what is available in OSM to a land use land cover map. S for example, so we have lots of data there. Uh, you all 
are familiar, of course, with OSM. We have these uh, map features. What do we have to do to go to all those map features and see which and how they can be associated to the land use land cover classes that we are interested in. So we went to this wiki with map features and went to which one of them and see how you can as assign it to a land use <coughs> or land cover class. So there is a description of the, the process we have created. So there are several people involved in this. For a fast explanation, so basically we need to choose the classes, which we call the nomenclature. And then we get OSM data. You, this needs to be done manually. So we need to identify from OSM data what we can assign to each one of the classes. And then we have this conversion process, which have several uh, tools inside it. We need some parameters. Some of them can be uh, created by users. Others can, some default parameters are also there. So we, the output of this process is uh, our polygons assigned to these classes. And then there are inconsistencies because there will be overlapping polygons with different classes. So we have to eliminate inconsistencies because in a land cover map you have only one class in each location. So you get after this uh, elimination of inconsistencies, uh, non-overlapping polygons. And then there is this generalization process which we did not do yet, this MMU means minimum mapping unit, because some, of, uh, some maps of land, land cover and land use have this minimum mapping unit, and if we want to compare what we are getting here with those maps, we should apply some generalization procedures. We did not apply them yet. So the nomenclatures we have uh, used so far is an urban atlas nomenclature. It has uh, 12, uh, thematic classes. Actually, the last version has uh, more classes. I'll show it in a minute. It's not available for all Europe. It's only for the main cities with more inhabitants. Uh, we also analyzed or uh, converted to Korean land cover uh, nomenclature. Here we have 44 thematic classes. And also for Global Land 30, which is a, a map produced, so it's a global map by the National Geometric Center of, of China uh, from uh, Landsat imagery. It has a special resolution of 30 meters and it has only 10 semantic classes. So this is an example, not an example, it's real. <laughs> the nomenclature of urban atlas, the one from 2006, the one from 2012 has already a few more classes. So it has more classes in level, level two for, uh, for example, agriculture. It has also a class called wetlands, and this is the Korean land cover classes. So we did not make the conversion to the three levels. So basically, we did not uh, make conversion to the third level because it's very hard to assign what is in OSM to all these classes. So we have it mainly for uh, first level and second level, even though in some cases we use uh, features that actually would correspond to level three in both of them. The global and 30 nomenclature, so it has only 10 classes, which is uh, much less classes and it's much easier to make the conversion. This is an example of the, of the process for only one class. So what we need to get is, for example, this class is class 1.2 in Urban Atlas. It corresponds to industry, commercial, public, military, private and transportation units. So we need to go to OSM and extract everything that may contribute to this class, either polygons or, for example, here you have communication units, which are lines. We need to convert those lines to regions. So we develop an algorithm to to assess automatically the, the width of roads so that they don't overlap buildings, for example, afterwards. So you put everything together, extract what you have to extract. When you have lines, you have to create those buffers. Um, and then you merge everything and you get a class. Okay. <laughs> I will just, this is an automatic process now. Uh, I can so we are creating a, a, a portal where we have several tools to export VGI. I can show it very fast. Let me just. 
It's not yet available. Uh, I have to, so this is um, volunteer work because we have real no funding. So we are basically doing this in spare time. So for example, here we go and choose Milan. Let's make it a small area so that it is fast. We draw an interest area. We download the data from OSM. <coughs> and now we run the position. Let's make it for Urban Atlas, for example. And uh, we get uh, a land cover map. OK, here it's in raster because it needs to be fast, because if it would be in vector, you'd have to wait a little more time. Uh, the aim is to make it available in vector. Uh, OK, so let's go back to the presentation. OK, so this is examples. Uh, what's represented here? So you have the Urban Atlas map, the official one. This is from 2006. This is a region of uh, London. Uh, and actually, so this is Urban Atlas level 2 and level 1. And this is the, what the, the result of the conversion from OpenStreetMap data to uh, the same nomenclature for level 2 and for level 1. There is one thing. Uh, so here, you see the differences because, of course, these maps take time to produce, and so they are already uh, out of date. So, and here you can see these were a stadium built for the Olympic Games, which were not in the official maps, and uh, here we could already see them. And this is the same, but the Corinne land cover. So you see the, the minimum mapping unit of Corinne, it's, it's, oh, it's much different from here. And so here we need a generalization process so that we can compare. So this is uh, the same for this region, which is more uh, rural, less, less uh, urban. Of course, when we convert, we have empty areas where you do not have that in OSM. You get nothing, so there is a hole in our map. And there are problems. So I, we don't have time to explain that. If you want afterwards, I can explain. Uh, so we did then, uh, this is to compare what is available in Europe. So in Europe, we have many maps. But in some parts of the world, there are no maps, no land use land cover maps, except the global ones, which have low resolution. So this uh, was a, a work we did uh, with Global Land 30, which is available. So applied it to Kathmandu, where there is OSM data. This is the original Global Land 30. This is the result of the conversion. And this is the updated, let's say. We call it updated. The thing is that where you do not have data, you get empty uh, space. So we uh, assign to the empty space what was available in uh, the original Global N30. It's a hybrid product that has problems, of course, because you have different timings and so on. But when you do not have much more data, it may be useful. And uh, what we did afterwards is that as we have more detail in, in OSM, we can use more detail in some classes, like in the urban classes. So instead of saying just urban, like we did here, uh, artificial surfaces in red. Here, we could separate between urban fabric uh, and then the commercial and so on, this, this class. OK, this is the same from Dar es Salaam. Uh, here, there are problematic classes. Uh, it, it's not uh, clear here, but for example, we get here this big regions with water, which actually uh, were uh, classified as wetlands. But there is no water there. There are buildings inside those regions. The thing is that probably someone classified flooding areas as wetlands. And so when we go and pick up wetlands as regions with water, we get uh, mistakes. So there is one limitation. OK, for um, Assessing how we can use or if we can use OSM for validation. Uh, the thing, so possible, first thing, we can make a direct comparison. The thing is that for validation, you need to have what we call ground truth, real good data. Uh, or we can use a sample of, of 
of data. So if we have a whole map, we can make direct comparisons. If we don't, we can get a sample and compare maps in, a cent in that sample. Uh, of course, there are rules to make the samples. Uh, in this paper, what we did, we created uh, a random sample to make some comparisons also. And uh, we did a direct comparison, and then with the sample, we made uh, one way to create the reference data was by photo interpretation, and another way was extracting data from OSM. And where there was no data, we used photo interpretation. And then compared the accuracy. So this is uh, Urban Atlas. So to test this, we uh, assess the accuracy of Urban Atlas just to see how it worked. So this is Urban Atlas. This is the extracted from the, the, the land use land cover, uh, the OSM. And this is the regions where there, are, there is agreement, which is most of it. There are some parts where there is no agreement. So you have one class here and another one there. Of course, level one, level two. Uh, of course, when you get to more detail, you have less regions that are uh, in accordance in both. So there is less agreement. OK, there are some numbers here. There are regions. The thing is that to, to do this, it's tricky. Because the regions where you do not have that in OSM are not uh, split in the same way by, by all classes. So you have a bias in the comparison. For example, there are, for exa here you have more regions that were not classified in this class than in the others. So this is tricky to get uh, uh, um, meaningful results. So to get rid of this, we created also this sample. Uh, the blue points represent the sample. Where there was data in OSM, we extracted the data from OSM. Where there wasn't, for example, in here, we used photo interpretation. The results show a high agreement. So this is results comparing urban atlas with, with the sample created with photo interpretations here with OSM and photo interpretation. So you see for level one, the results are almost the same. For level two, you get a little more problems. For example, this class here with the user's accuracy was much lower. So there are problematic classes. But for level one, actually, the thing worked quite well for these regions. So third way of using OSM, training. OK, so basically there are two ways to do it. You get all data, assign it to classes, and use it all to training. So some colleagues of ours already tested that. Uh, the thing is that if, if you have wrong regions, wrongly classified, you'll get problems in the classification. Um, another approach uh, is to select regions from OSM, which are more reliable, and then use those only those for training. So we are now, I do not have results, we are in the middle of the process of finishing some results with this second, first and second also. Uh, so basically, we used NDVI, so we normalize different vegetation index, where we can identify in the image what is vegetation, what is not. And for example, if you have a region that is, according to the NDVI, vegetation, and that region is inside the region classified as urban, uh, you do not use it for training because you have plants there, you do not have buildings. And the other way around, if you have an NDVI which does correspond not to vegetation and that is used for classification of vegetation, you just leave it out and don't use it. Another way is to identify process to get uh, exclude regions which can be uh, assigned to more than one class. So we already tested some of these. And also, instead of using everything, just select some regions. And the results are promising. Um, in some cases, the accuracy is very similar to the accuracy you get when you make the, the manual uh, selection of training areas. And uh, it depends a lot on the nomenclature. Because uh, if you have nomenclatures which do not correspond very well with what's, what's in OSM, you get problems. OK, so why to do this? I already said the, the, the aim is automate the most that you can. It's faster, it's cheaper, and uh, allow you to have more current maps, because you can do it very fast. And uh, also, 
uh, facilitate the creation of high resolution maps, for example, in the regions where they are, they are not available like the regions where you just have, for example, Global N30, <laughs> and you need a, more, uh, a map with more resolution. Uh, so OSM is very good for this because it has a lots of data, low cost, <laughs> dynamic, you have local knowledge, which is also important for this, and the main problem is that in some places you have no data. And so the data quality is always a problem because, for example, if you want to validate or train, you need good data, not not data which are then uh, creating problems in the process. Data heterogeneity, in some regions they are very well mapped, others are not, some features are missing in, other pla in some places, and also inconsistencies because sometimes you have polygons overlapping, corresponding to different classes, and you have to figure out what to do with it. For example, if you have a bridge over water, you'll get both classes in that region, you have to choose one. Usually, you, you choose the bridge, the bridge, it's not called bridge, it's a, a highway, for example. But it can be a tunnel. So if you choose the bridge, you, you, you may have a tunnel under the water, it, it can happen, so this is a problem. Future work, so we are improving the, the process of convert, the conversion. Uh, keep working on extraction, only reliable data. Integration, several sources of data. and. I we have been mainly involved in extracting data. We also want to <laughs> contribute to the data. So we ask, okay, so mapping parties, uh, youth mappers, I'm from a university, so I'm starting on this, and uh, if you can help me, great. So many opportunities, many challenges, definitely. And thank you. <laughs> I hope I was on time. Thank you very much, Sidalia. Now we do have some uh, very, very few important questions left because the next presentation should be on time, which uh, has a special setting. Any questions? Yes, please. What sort of classifiers are you training on the data? Uh, we already tested several. We used the uh, um, maximum likelihood in these last uh, tests. We use maximum likelihood, but we also already use uh, fuzzy classifiers. Uh, we can test several. Yeah. Uh, 